Airbnb just dropped a hundred plus changes to the platform. These enhancements beg the question of how many of these changes are actually legitimate or is it just a lot of hype? And 103 changes, surely that's going to mean more money in your pocket. Or does it? Also, with so many changes, will you have to relearn how to use the platform? And with this many enhancements, as a host, you need to know the answers. So keep watching to find out. Welcome to another episode of Airbnb Uncovered. I'm Matt, the creator of AirbnbUncovered.com and Airbnb Superhost. On this channel, I uncover some of the best kept hosting secrets, as well as share with you everything that I've ever learned after hosting over 3,000 guests. My tips, tricks, and best practices are focused on helping new hosts earn more revenue, attract the best guests, and achieve super host status faster. So if you're new to hosting on Airbnb, this is the right channel for you. So I'm back after a bit of a break. And just in time, as many experts are predicting a massive return to travel, as well as all of these recently announced changes to the Airbnb platform. I'd spent the last few weeks renovating and preparing a property for sale. COVID sure has heated up the real estate market, even in locations that had previously seen little to no increases over the past few years. But the renos are all done now, so you're going to be seeing me much, much more and more regularly. I should be doing new videos every second week or so, and maybe even more often depending on what's happening in the Airbnb world. And I'll also do my best to sprinkle in some live sessions to answer your questions directly. But enough about me, let's get into all of these changes from Airbnb and see if they're going to fuel more stays on the platform during the rebound to travel. The details on all 103 changes are pretty vague, and for those of you who know me, I find that, well, frustrating. I guess I'm impatient. I want all the info now so I can analyze it, interpret it, and put it all to work in my Airbnb business so I can make more money. Nevertheless, let's get into the info that we do know about the 103 enhancements announced earlier this week. And I think the best place to start is on the guest side since that's where the bulk of the immediate, the immediate changes are coming into play. Airbnb has done a really good job at enhancing the search capabilities for our potential guests. And for those of you who follow my channel, I am all about the search ranking. I think the easiest way to explain the new search features is to use an example. So let's say that you want to book a cottage next to a lake for a week sometime this summer. Your dates are flexible because you don't yet have a lot planned for the summer. You want the cottage to have six bedrooms, three bathrooms, a hot tub, and for sure be on a lakefront. Under the old system, you'd have to check every single week over the summer to see all available options because listings that are booked don't so in search results. Now, with this update, you'll specify a date range and if you want to book for a weekend, a week, or a month. So in this example, it's going to be a week sometime over the summer, sometime between June and August. The system will then show you all of the listings that meet your criteria that are available for one week sometime between June and August. Airbnb is calling this flexible dates. Airbnb has also introduced something else called flexible matching. Search results will now include listings that are close to the potential guest's desired property. So let's go back to our example, a six bedroom cottage next to a lake with three bathrooms and a hot tub. The system, the system will now show listings that don't have a hot tub or maybe that have seven bedrooms instead of six. And that's called flexible matching. The last search enhancement, it's not all that interesting to me, maybe it will be for you, but it's called flexible destinations and it really zeroes in on a listing's characteristics, most specifically the type of accommodation. So if you're looking for something really unique, like maybe a stay on an island, then you'll probably see listings from the continent that you're on. If you're looking for something more generic, like maybe a stay in a tiny house, then you'll probably see results from your region, state, or province, because there's probably a lot of them. 
This is going, this change is really going to boost unique listings. And it's probably less interesting to me because my Airbnbs are primarily in condos in downtown Toronto. Although I do think it would be so cool to build a treehouse to Airbnb. So what's the bottom line here for hosts? Well, it means that if you have a unique property, perhaps it's a cottage on a lake, or you can host larger groups, or maybe it is that you have that tree house, or maybe you are hosting in a high demand location where weekends and prime weeks go early. If that's you, then you're probably gonna see a surge of bookings in advance. And with this knowledge, you should price accordingly to ensure that you're not leaving money on the table. And I like this change for this reason. I think it will also really incentivize hosts to create a more unique experiences, experience that matches the unique trip characteristics that Airbnb is now making easier to find. There are about 40 other new guest facing changes, but to be honest, they're not really that important to know about as a host, with the exception of an enhanced arrival guide. There were no details provided, but when they are, I will let you know because inevitably hosts will have to fill in that section so that the guests can actually use this enhanced arrival guide. And the rest, well, they're really just some more additional filters um, on how to find properties. In my opinion, the changes on the host side really, well, they're not that impactful. In fact, I'd say that about 80% of them are things that are already available in my market. It's things like scheduling messages, creating quick, quick replies, which if memory serves me, have been available since like 2018. Inbox search is another new one, but it's also been available in my market for a few months now, and there's a few other minor ones. They're also gonna be adding a today tab on the app, which sounds like the current version of the dashboard on the desktop version of the site. And in my opinion, again, this isn't overly useful to me because of the way that I manage my inbox. It's just normally a bunch of outdated information on requests and inquiries, or that uh, dashboard is giving me reminders to do things that, I, that don't apply to me. So I think this is the third redesign of this page in the past five years. So hopefully this one will be more useful. Now remember, Airbnb sometimes tests new features in a location, so these are all new to you, that's why. Now let's get into the big ones. A listing can now be created in as few as 10 steps thanks to pre-population of publicly available real estate and property data and some other enhancements. So the system is now going to begin completing your listing based on your address. So if you have a four bedroom house, the system may be able to find that information on the internet and incorporate it into your brand new listing so you don't have to. It will also now begin to auto-complete your description based on some of the features that you select. Which again, I'm sure the system used to do this a few years ago. I'd noticed it was gone and I guess now it's back. And to be honest, it wasn't that great back then. Hopefully they've made it better this time. Also, the system will now try to auto-order your pictures. And this could be interesting. Remember, pictures are the number one factor in a guest booking decision. You want to make sure that you get that order perfect. Your listing success depends on it. So I'm not too sure I'll be allowing the system to predetermine my pictures for me. The system will also now be able to show you a preview of your listing of your new listing before it goes live. Again, something I'm sure used to be available in the past. So as you can tell, I'm a bit skeptical on the, this 10 step process to create a new listing and how new and improved it really will be. I've always found that with the current listing creation process that it left out many critical settings which left new hosts badly exposed to problematic guests. These critical omissions could only be corrected by going deep into the settings. So I guess time will tell if Airbnb will incorporate these critical safety checks into the new streamlined process to create a new listing. Reviews. It seems that Airbnb is going to be revamping the review section to make it more detailed. Once again, this looks like a change that has already been made as my reviews have already been expanded and are currently quite detailed and have been for at least the last year or so. 
I can't imagine asking guests for even more feedback than is currently requested on my listings. I recently stayed in an Airbnb and after my stay, I provided my host a review, as every good guest should. And it took me more than five minutes to complete because of all of the fields and all of the questions. As a former marketer with about 10 years experience in that field, I can I hope that Airbnb doesn't go too crazy here because when a reviews process is too cumbersome, people either stop and abandon it early or they just won't bother at all. And this should be and this would be a real shame. You see, reviews are like the third most used factor a potential guest uses to make their booking decisions. So they are really, really, really important. Also, as hosts, we need that feedback from guests to keep improving our hosting businesses. There's a big enhancement on the way for new hosts, and that is the ability to get answers from other super hosts. Now, this could be interesting. As many of you know, super host status can be achieved in as few as a couple of weeks, depending on the number of stays you host during that time and how good your reviews are. But I've seen many listings out there hosted by super hosts that I would never stay in based on the photos and the description and the quality of the listing. I'm guessing that these hosts luck into super host status for a quarter only to lose it the next quarter. And with that said, I hope that there will be some kind of vetting process or additional criteria to see who will be able to provide the advice. Because trust me, I thought I knew a lot after hosting my first 100 guests. 3,000 guests later, and I can tell you that guests are constantly surprising you, and market conditions can change on a dime. Uh, COVID, for instance. And this is a nice segue for the last major category of enhancements in the 103 enhancements, and that is improved customer service. If you've had to call into Airbnb over the past eight months, then you know it is as frustrating as trying to herd cats in a rainstorm in the dark. Airbnb says that they're going to be changing that. They're doubling the number of agents and bringing back the dedicated super host phone line, which it says will be staffed by the most experienced agents. That last one, the dedicated super host support line, will be a godsend to me. I am getting tired of explaining Airbnb's terms of service to the people who work there. I just hope that doubling the support staff will include the rehiring of the experienced staff that used to staff the Superhost line, from whom I haven't heard of or reached since the Airbnb layoffs. Nevertheless, let's get back to the enhancements. There were a number of additional vague promises about updating the reviews dispute process, which if memory serves me correctly, was updated a few months back. So I wonder if this is what they're talking about. And they're also going to be providing more immediate help for on-trip support, as well as safety resources. And from what I can see, it sounds like there's going to be more self-serve uh, help options available. Question, what is the one enhancement that wasn't made that you want to see? For me, it's the ability to see whether a potential guest is over or under the age of 25 on an inquiry and not just be able to see it on a request. Tell us all in the comments below what you want to see. At the very end of the announcement, the fine print reads, future release timing and availability may vary by location. For our collective good, let's hope that that's sooner rather than later. I welcome all of these changes for the good of our hosting community particularly the enhanced search, the easier onboarding for new hosts, new reviews dispute process, and the Superhost a dedicated phone line. Yes, there were 103 changes and enhancements made. Does this mean that you're going to have to relearn the entire Airbnb system? Definitely not. It seems it's going to function very much the same as it always has on the day to day. Will these changes make your life easier? Well, let's hope so with the streamlined support and updated today tab. And the ultimate question, well, will these enhancements make your Airbnb business more profitable and put more money back into your pocket? 
in the majority of cases, probably not going to be anything hugely dramatic, unless you have a very unique listing and we're having trouble getting visibility. I mean, overall, the new search functionality should drive more potential guests to the site and in theory allow them to get really close to listings that match their needs. So there is that that could put a few more listings on your calendar. Thanks to COVID, the world has changed. Travel has changed. But more importantly, more travelers tried Airbnb over the pandemic because of our inherent advantages over hotels. There's more privacy, bigger spaces, unique locations, and fewer interactions in crowded lobbies and elevators. The return to travel is going to be huge. We're going to be getting local guests who aren't quite ready to board an airplane or can't due to restrictions. Plus, we're also going to be getting far away travelers who have been saving their pennies for a big, huge trip once this is all over. You can count me into that last category. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please spread the word on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, you know them. You can also give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Stay tuned for another new video coming soon. There was a ton of data released recently about the return to travel. So at this point, it looks like I'll dive into that for the next topic of my video. So until then, bye for now.